Hi everyone, welcome to POS 201, Introduction to Political Theory, and I'm your instructor, Rob Glover. So this is just a short kind of introductory video to go over the course and some of the logistics, how to access information that's available on the course Blackboard site, um, how to kind of maneuver around the course, and just to make sure that everybody's kind of comfortable with where the, the content is and, and what you're expected to do for the course. So really you should be watching this prior to starting any of the material for the course, prior to, prior to uh, trying to move through the actual content. You should make sure that you're comfortable with everything that's, um, that's laid out here. The very first thing you might want to do is print out the course syllabus and have that in front of you or um, you know if you have that on your computer maybe open that up and, and take a look at it. Uh, but you want to review that course syllabus and uh, kind of be following along with that as we go through some of the aspects of the, the course and its layout. So the first thing I'll just note here, um, this is exactly what you have on your course syllabus. Uh, this is my contact information, how to get in touch with me, um, how office hours are going to work in this course. Uh, email is usually the best way to get in touch with me. The phone number that you have there is my office phone number. You can try that. Given that it's a summer class, uh, I'm kind of in and out of the office quite a bit. I'm working from home quite a bit, traveling. So that might not be the best way to get in touch with me, but usually through email, you'll get a response within a few hours, um, certainly no more than 24 hours. We also have office hours for this class. Uh, now, if you're in the Orono area and you do want to meet up in person, I'm in and out of the office all summer. I'd be happy to set up a time to meet with you in person. Uh, if that's not possible either because of your schedule or because of your location, then we can meet up in the virtual office hours and those are available in Blackboard. There's a link in the sidebar for the virtual office hours and that just takes you to um, a Google Hangout site where I'll be available from 12 to 2 on Wednesday. If we want to set up a different time, if those specific hours don't work for you, we can do that as well. Uh, just one quick note on that, you will need to be signed in through your main.edu account uh, in Google Hangouts in order to actually get get access to the virtual office hours. So something to be mindful of. Um, other than that, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, let me go over what the course is and what we'll study in the course. So this is an introductory course in political theory. And political theory, um, we'll get into this more in, in the first lecture, but political theory is a little bit different than the courses you might have taken in political science. So if you've taken, you know, the intro American government class, you've taken a course in international relations, comparative politics, what we do in here is a little bit different. And really what makes it different is the fact that we're asking normative questions. So we're not simply looking at the world as it exists and trying to understand it. We're going that further step to ask, what do we want the political world to be? And some of the other courses you might have taken tend to focus on explanation, prediction, understanding, but this is a course that's a little bit more conceptual, philosophical. The texts that we read are core texts of political philosophy and political theory, and it doesn't mean that they ignore that empirical realm of everyday politics, but they try to think in terms of ideals, ideal types that we strive towards. So that's, um, that's kind of what makes this course distinctive and it makes the material distinctive. And if you've had prior courses in political science, this might be significantly different than those courses. But we'll get into that more in the first lecture and we'll talk about specifically uh, what that means. So how we study it, um, this is a survey course. Sometimes this course is taught with you know an exclusive focus on one particularly important text and you really dive deep into it. But this is a survey course that covers a tremendous amount of ground. Um, really the core texts of Western political thought starting in the classical period, starting in ancient Greece, and going all the way up to present day. You read some things that are um, you know, really kind of speaking to present political realities as well. So we cover a tremendous amount of ground. And in this version of the course, we do it in three weeks. So it's a lot of reading, it's a, a lot of material, and a lot of uh, time and political history to cover. But hopefully uh, you find it manageable. These are important ideas. These are ideas and philosophies which have shaped the world in the past. They've shaped our political history, and they continue to shape the contemporary political world. Um, I will just say there's a, a lot of reading for this class, and because it's an entire semester course compressed into three weeks, um, you are expected to read 
pretty intensively and the material can be difficult. So what I've done to try to help you manage that, to try to help you manage the workload a little bit, is provide uh, reading questions, which you can access through Blackboard, and I'll show you that in a second. But some of the some of the weeks that um, that you're you're reading material for the course, it's an awful lot of pages, and so the, the reading questions not only try to help you focus on on what is important in these texts, because there'll be a lot of material covered, and it might be an unfamiliar language. But also, um, you know, what are the really essential aspects of these texts? Where should you zero in and kind of focus your energy as you're moving through the material? So hopefully that, that makes it easier for you. And I'm available to you as a resource as well. So if you're struggling with a particular text or you're not understanding something, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I can try to help you out there. The readings that we have are, um, there's two kind of, core texts that we'll be using these three weeks. The first is Stephen Kahn, Political Philosophy, the, the Essential Text from Oxford University Press. This is the second edition and the ISBN that you have there and hopefully what's available for purchase in the UMaine bookstore is the second edition. There is now a third edition. It's, um, it has the same, um, so most of the same material. So if you did get the, the third edition, then you're probably okay. You paid a little bit more than the second edition costs, and that's why I've been reluctant to switch to the new edition, is to try to keep costs down for you. But if you did get the third edition, that's no problem. The only issue you might run into there is page numbers won't match up completely, but you can probably figure it out, um, you know, just based on the specific chapters you're supposed to be reading. So, but if you have any issues there, let me know. Um, also, Edward Bellamy, uh, this is a novel. We actually read it um, a little bit further on in the course, in the third week we move into Bellamy. And um, it's available as well in the bookstore, available online. It should be relatively cheap. Uh, if you don't get this version, the Oxford World Classics edition, you're probably fine. Uh, there's no issues with translation or anything like that. And if you're really trying to save yourself some money, you can probably find a PDF of this um, online as well. If you're comfortable reading things electronically. I know sometimes it's hard to read uh, an extended set of pages on a screen as opposed to on a piece of paper, but I'm pretty sure that if you're if you're diligent with your Google search, you can find this as well. Um, there's other readings that are available electronically. Actually, that's through Blackboard. We've switched over completely to Blackboard. Um, and I'll show you exactly where in just one second. And those are listed in the syllabus. So. When you get into the syllabus, you see the course schedule, and that lays out what specifically you're supposed to read for um, each day of the course. So why don't I hop out of here for a second and jump into um, Blackboard and show you uh, what you should be seeing there. So I'll switch into the student preview version. So this, this should be what you see um, when you open up Blackboard or something pretty close to this. And if you have any issues with Blackboard, um, the course is not showing up in your, your um, courses. The first thing that you'll want to make sure is that uh, you are at the new Blackboard site, bb.courses.main.edu, not the old courses.main.edu. So you want to make sure that you're there. Uh, and if it's still not showing up, we should get in touch with the folks in um, IT and just kind of make sure that you are in fact enrolled and you have access and there's no sort of block or technical issue there. Um, and we can try to get that resolved. They're the best people to get in touch with for any technical issues. Um, if there's you know technical glitches or access issues or certainly anything related to your uh, Blackboard login or password or anything like that, I really can't help you with that stuff. Um, that requires access and administrator level permissions that I don't have as the instructor for the course, but they're really good over there and they should be able to help you. And their um, contact information is available in the syllabus. So um, here's what you see on the home page. Um, there will be announcements here periodically throughout the course. Um, so that hopefully will pop up uh, front and center when there's any announcements related to the course, but I'll contact you through email as well. And then you move over to the sidebar and this is really all of the content for the course. Everything is housed here. It used to be split between uh, first class and Blackboard, and now we've moved completely to Blackboard. So all of it is in one location. 
you have an electronic copy of your syllabus. Um, that's always there. If you lose your copy or you left it at home and need access to it, it's available electronically. Course lectures and PowerPoints. So the primary way that I convey actual course content to you is through recorded video lectures. And these are broken out by week uh, in these three folders. And then they're broken out by day. So um, here you see our first lecture for June 5th on what is political theory's relation to the discipline of political science is available. You would click there. This link would take you to a YouTube video. And then anytime I use a PowerPoint in uh, the lecture videos, that's available to you as well. You don't have to follow along because that will be available in the video itself, but this is a good tool for reviewing concepts, um, going back over the lectures and trying to remind yourself of what was covered when, and that's all available there. Um, so the lectures and PowerPoints, as I said, they go week by week and then day by day. It should be relatively easy to follow. The core thing that you want to worry about for this course is keeping up with the material, keeping up with the reading, keeping up with the lectures, and not falling behind. So do your best. Um, it's a lot of material in a very compressed time frame. Also, um, any readings that are not either the context or the Bellamy text are available in this folder right here, additional readings. There's only a few. Um, and in fact, the first reading that you have for the course, the piece by Isaiah Berlin, is available there as a PDF and um, a later reading as well. And you also have those reading questions that I mentioned that um, really the goal there is to, to help you focus on what's important in these texts, why are we reading them, what are the core questions and themes within them, and where specifically should you really um, target your attention, where is it okay to read you know, a little bit less in depth. So these reading questions will help you. you should look at them, print them out before you start to do the reading and consult them as you're doing the reading. All right, so um, let me hop back into the PowerPoint just for one sec. Um, so your grade is basically comprised of four components. The kind of half of your grade is um, a midterm and a final exam that are worth 25% each. And those are pretty standard. Uh, you get a study guide. The study guide is actually available right now on Blackboard if you want to look at what you'll be asked to do on the midterm and the final exam. And that is conducted through the Blackboard website. The exams actually are, um, there's set days in which they'll be available from 12 a.m. until 11.59 p.m. And you'll have a certain time frame to um, take the exam once you open it. Once you click, yes, I'm ready to take the exam, um, you'll have a certain amount of time. Let me just double check on how much time you'll have. The midterm, you'll have 90 minutes um, to complete the exam. And then for the final exam, you'll have slightly longer. You have 120 minutes. Um, you're not kicked out after that point. You know, if you go over time, you're not it doesn't just shut off and, and kick you out. But it does, um, when you submit your exam to me, it does let me know that you've gone over time and there will be point deductions if you go significantly over time for the exam. So just, uh, it should be more than enough time, but the thing I always stress to students with taking the exam through Blackboard is you wanna make sure that you have a good quiet space in which you can devote your attention strictly to what you're working on and, um, and that you're not going to lose connection, you're not going to be distracted by other things. So just kind of set aside some time in your afternoon or your evening in which you can focus strictly on that, but it should be more than enough time. The other two components of your grade are a paper um, that's four to five pages. It's not uh, an extremely long paper, double spaced. Um, and the paper is actually on a film that you're going to watch in relation to some themes that we deal with later in the course called The Educators. It's a foreign film, there's subtitles, uh, but it's a really good film. I, th I think most students kind of enjoy it. And, um, and then the last component is participation in online discussion, which is 20% of your grade. So I'll hop back into Blackboard to show you those things. Um, in this link right here, you have the paper guidelines and your exam study guides. So the midterm exam study guide is there. The final exam study guide is there. You have the dates, the 15th and the 23rd. And then you have the paper assignment um, for this film, The Educators. That's due on the 21st. It's the third week of class. 
and then this is a link to the a digital version of the full film. There are sometimes issues with, uh, it's a streaming version of the film, there's sometimes issues with browsers where um, you know, students will try to access the film and they won't be able to open it. And generally my, my piece of advice is that it's, it's usually one of two things. It's either an issue with your browser, so you might try using another brow browser. So if you're using you know, Chrome, try using Safari or try using Firefox. Um, either that or it's an issue with connection speed and the quality of your internet connection. But generally, if you're able to stream something else, if you're able to stream you know, Netflix or YouTube, um, then you should be able to play this film. It's usually, connection is usually less of an issue. So um, that's a little bit about the paper guidelines, the exam study guides, and the link to actually take the exams is right here. So on the days in which the exams are available, the 15th and the 23rd, you can either click through on the announcement that will appear on the front page or you can go to this sidebar. Uh, paper assignment submission, when you are actually turning in your paper, you will do so right here. That's due on the 21st by the end of the day. And when you click on this, it just opens up a uh, assignment submission platform and you just browse your computer, find the file, um, and go ahead and submit it. And if you have any comments you want to submit to me, I see those as well when I open up your assignments. I will say um, if you could submit it as a, a Word document or a PDF, that's ideal. Sometimes I get RTF files and pages files and it's, it, I'm eventually able to open it, but usually formatting is screwed up um, or uh, you know I, I have to convert it to some other format. That's just it's easier for me and enables me to grade more quickly and more efficiently if you do it as a document or a PDF. Um, okay, the last thing I want to talk about here is the discussions, um, the class discussion. So class discussion, um, particularly in a political theory class, is really important. And when I teach political theory classes live, there's a lot of emphasis on kind of dissecting ideas posing provocative or potentially controversial questions and discussing them. Now in the online format, I, I want to retain that, right? I think it's important to grapple with ideas in a course on political theory, but obviously we're not going to be discuss discussing it live as a group. So what I do instead in the online environment is I have these discussion posts. So after you watch the course lecture, well, after you do the reading, you watch the course lecture, um, then the next step should be to head over to the discussion board and you see broken out by the individual lectures there are discussion threads and what i try to do here is um, this is where we try to apply ideas right so on the very first lecture uh, we're talking about what political theory is we, you read a piece by isaiah berlin in which he's talking about political pluralism um, and that relates i think in important ways to contemporary debates on partisanship. And so you have a YouTube video here, which is uh, former Maine Senator Olympia Snow talking about the current level of partisanship in Congress and why she views it to be a problem. And it's just a short clip. Usually these are, are short clips. It might be an interview. It might be um, often it, it's clips from movies or documentaries. It might be um, you know some past clip from a propaganda film or a news story. And it's something to kind of get you thinking about how to apply the ideas that we discuss in class. And then I, I raise some questions. So all you have to do is hit reply, and then you craft a response to this question or another question that you're interested in. Now, I have guidelines for what I want to see in these, um, these, these discussion posts in the syllabus. Primarily, I'm not looking for something uh, you know too massive. These should be you know, roughly 500 words, um, they should be making an argument and, uh, you know, sh you should have a point that you want to prove and you should try to integrate ideas from the text and from the lecture and really kind of apply those ideas to whatever's being discussed, whatever's being, um, you know, asked or, or posed in the video clip that you're watching. So there's a variety of these. Uh, we talk about, you know, punk rock and Socrates. We talk about the Godfather and Machiavelli. Uh, sometimes they're a little more reverent, sometimes they're more serious, but hopefully it's just an opportunity for you to engage with ideas and um, you know, show me that you can apply some of the ideas that we're talking about in class and also engage with one another. You're, you're free to 
you know, reply to another student that's um, that said something that you think is interesting or you, you want to kind of grapple with a little bit. The only thing that I ask in the discussion forum, uh, and I've, I've never really had any problems with this, but I just want to reiterate it, is that it's important to be respectful and civil uh, in these discussions. So we're not looking for, you know, crossfire, bare knuckles, brawls about political issues. We're dealing with controversial questions. There's no easy answers. Everybody comes to this class with different political perspectives, different uh, ideological perspectives, and you just have to respect that. You have to respect that. We're not going to agree on everything, and that's okay. And we can talk about things that we disagree with other people on and do so in a respectful way. So this, um, these are, you're expected to do three of these a week. Uh, so you have to be pretty consistent uh, in, in keeping up with these. And, um, and that's really it. You'll be graded on uh, you know, the extent to which it's a well-crafted response, it's clear, it's articulate, and it's integrating ideas from the, the text and from uh, lecture and applying them to the, the video clip that you're watching. So three responses, three comments each week. Uh, the three responses should be posted by 11.59 on Saturday of that week. So it gives you some time into the weekend to, to craft your responses. And that's, um, that's pretty much it. That um, pretty much covers it. So that's how your grade will be decided. And at any point you can track your course grades through the Blackboard Grade Center or the My Grades feature. You just click on that. And that will tell you how you've done on the assignments that I've graded so far. And I try to be pretty good about grading things in a timely fashion and where your overall course average stands. Um, so that we just talked about. We talked about participation in online discussion and exams. Um, as I said, you're going to uh, take the midterm and the final exam on the Blackboard platform and you just click through the exam announcement on the front page or you go to that exams link in the sidebar. And as I said, you can track your grades and performance through the Grade Center. Um, the study guide for the two exams that you take, the midterm and the final, is actually available right now. So feel free to head over there and take a look at what you're going to be expected to do. And then the last thing that I would just point out is the um, class schedule. So this is actually the class schedule for um, the last offering of the course, but it looks pretty similar to, to this one. Um, and it's, as I said, it's laid out by week and it's laid out by day. So you know exactly where you need to be. And if you fall behind, you know exactly where you need to catch up to. Um, and just keep a close eye on this class schedule, have a sense of when assignments are due, and just try to be diligent in doing the reading and completing assignments. Try not to fall behind. Um, the readings that are listed there should be done in, in advance of watching the lecture. So consult the reading questions for guidance, but read the readings and then, you know, even if they're hard, even if you feel like you're not understanding it, and then the lecture should help you make sense of it. And then viewing the videos and participation in online discussion should be done after you complete the reading, after you watch the lecture. All right, so if you have any questions, if anything that I've gone over here is unclear, please don't hesitate to contact me through email. My email address you have on the syllabus, it's also right there on the screen in front of you, robert.glover at main.edu and I can help clarify any questions you have. That's all for now. Um, so if everything here is clear and you have a sense of where things are in, on the Blackboard page, you should go ahead and read the first reading and, um, and consult the reading questions for guidance, and then you can watch the first lecture. All right, thanks everybody.